Here's the secret of making money with speculation. Now we first have to distinguish between speculation and investing, right? Investing means to simply just put your money into a certain asset that you prefer over the long term over simply just having fiat, right? Because fiat depreciates with inflation, etc. You want to have your money into something else, you just park it there, you invest, right? You think that this investment will appreciate, you're not intending to sell it anytime soon. That's investing. Speculation is something completely different. Speculating is the idea of buying low and selling high. You have already the intention of selling it to somebody that comes after you. Okay, so you need to be better in a certain market to time the market better. You need to understand the drivers of what's moving the price down and what's moving the price up. And you need to be better than average in order to do this, right? If you want to be the one that's buying low and where you're really picking somehow the bottom and you're picking somehow the top of selling high, you need to understand this better than other people, right? Because somebody else is going to sell it for that low price. Somebody else is going to buy it for that high price, right? They think it's going to continue to rise when, when they're buying for high. So you need to be better than the average. But the problem with speculation is that you don't just need to be better than the average market participant. You need to be better than the average dollar. In other words, the people that consistently win in speculation, they tend to have more money, right? So they deploy more money so they move the price more so in order to pick better bottoms and better tops than the average dollar you have to be basically beating the other winners because the losers they probably have a much smaller share of the overall market so it would just be a rough guess right but my guess would be you don't just have to be among the top 50 percent of people that invest you have to be at least among the top 10 percent in other words, 90% of people that try to speculate, that try to pick bottoms and tops are likely going to lose and 10% are gaining because those are the ones that understand all those drivers. Those are the ones that have enough capital to deploy because they already have a history of winning in speculative markets. So what they need to do in order to be among the top 10%? So first of all, you need to have more knowledge of that particular market. You need to be more skilled about it. You need to be more informed about it. You need to have theoretical knowledge, but also practical knowledge. What's important here is though, I'm explaining this in terms of relative standing within other market participants, right? Speculation is a player versus player game. Different to investing, right? In investing, everybody just holds and thinks the thing will appreciate over time, all fine. Speculation is more or less directly taking money from other market participants, player versus player. Whoever is better gets the money. So when it's a relative game, what you have to look at is you have to be the top 10%. So what you want to look for is markets where the competition is not so tough. Okay, so you want to get into a market when you speculate where there are not a lot of other professionals that you play against. You need to be in a market where when you put in a lot of time, you have a chance of being better than the rest of people that put in their time. For example, if you go into Forex trading, right? Currency exchanges. There are a lot of hedge funds that have very, very smart people, quant people, fundamental analysis people, etc., that put their full a career on this to try to anticipate where might the currency exchange rate go in the future. If you're trying to get a foothold in that market and to outspeculate those professionals, you're pretty much done, right? You're not going to win. So what's important, what's the fundamental basis, first of all, in order to make money with speculation, is to pick an inefficient market. And inefficiencies manifest in several ways. So the first kind of inefficiency is um, a very heterogeneous market in terms of geography. So when you look at housing, for example, property, somebody that might be really good at valuing a property, say in Hamburg, Germany, might have no idea how to value a property in New York. 
right? And when you are even within New York, the people that know how to value commercial real estate in the city center might have no idea how to value property uh, properly, at least, uh, say residential property in the suburbs. So the market is very heterogeneous. You have high-end property, you have low-end property, you have uh, property in all different kinds of areas, and of course the fundamentals, how you value them, right, with discounted cash flow, etc., they're all the same. But the real speculative gain, right? For example, if you want to do flipping, right? You buy a house on the cheap and you renovate it, you sell it for expensive. These kind of uh, edges that you can build in the market, you can only get once you really know a certain district and you really know a sub-market very well. When you know, okay, in this area of town, this particular road is very, very popular. And I also know that there will be some additional transport being built, maybe some, some kind of a highway five minutes away that it's easier to reach other areas. Maybe uh, you also know any other kind of small details, right, that the average Joe doesn't know. You know all these kind of little tweaks that then help you make an adjustment to the price of the house. Um, this will then obviously help very much in gaining an edge, and that's speculative edge. So you need to narrow down, you need to become an expert in that particular field in order to outperform. And I think you need to be at least the top 10%. Now, one important thing here is also uh, transaction cost. Not necessarily monetarily, but especially in terms of time. So when you buy property, it is very time consuming, right? The bidding process, the underwriting, getting the mortgage, etc. You can't just scale this to hundreds of properties very easily. It's very different to Forex trading, right? If you trade um, 1 million US dollars or 100,000 uh, US dollars or a billion US dollars, it's probably not that different in, in terms of uh, squeezing out your little edge there. So even though you might be good at property, you're not going to be able to scale that skill into infinity and that makes the, the market itself less efficient, which gives you personally more chance of beating the property market than beating the forex market. So this is a fundamental question you always have to ask yourself when speculating. You are trying to be better than the average Joe or the average capital. In order to do this, you need to have weak competition. In order to have weak competition, you need to have many different sub-markets that somehow behave differently. That's one way. Another way, and this is why this channel here is focusing so much on crypto, another way to become better than the, uh, the, the average or the top 10%, now in order to get in those top 10% is to look at markets that are new, that are fresh, that just start out. Because when you focus your attention on, for example, the crypto market, there is nobody in the market that has done this already for 20 years, simply because the market didn't exist that long. The newer a market is, the more likelihood you have to outperform it. For example, when the NFT market just started out, right, you could have all kinds of models to price certain trades or to pick up NFTs that might be rallying very soon because maybe they are uh, from certain creators that are very likely to be popular, they have a, lo a lot of following, etc. These kinds of trades can only be done in the early times when there's not yet a lot of people that focus on this, that have uh, all kinds of automatic analysis around this. So that's another way to do this. So you want to become an expert in something and you want to be better than others. What I've personally done is, for example, I've written a trading bot. Okay, this trading bot ran for like three months and I made a bit of money off this. And the way I was able to make money off of that trading bot is I really analyzed the blockchain, tried to find out what are other trading bots doing on that Binance Smart Chain it was, okay? So what are other profe uh, where are other trading bots that trade actively that actually make money? And I used Dune Analytics in order to dive into the kind of strategies they're employing. So I was able to kind of reverse engineer what other trading bots are doing. When are they buying? When are they selling? And so I could kind of anticipate when certain bots are buying and I could basically trick them into doing certain actions that I wanted them to do. I could 
generate signals so that they would suddenly be buying and I could generate signals that, so that they would sell and so I could basically uh, outplay those other bots. I could buy an asset, I could generate a signal for them to buy, they are buying and then I could sell afterwards. So that's what I done and, and that's what worked for roughly uh, two or three months. And then afterwards that bot that I was basically uh, outplaying fixed that issue and so I couldn't make money with this anymore. But this is how you make money with very short term speculation, right? You try to outsmart others. Um, you could either outsmart the general public, right? The retail crowd because they don't know what's going on or you could just outsmart uh, other very good players. So um, what's important with speculation? The first important takeaway here is dive into niches and become an expert. What I've done, um, maybe another example here, right? So I have uh, done this trading bot thing. What I've also done is, for example, for uh, DeFi, you very often have these Ponzi nomics going around, right? You've got uh, mechanisms where money flows from uh, new investors to old investors. And all of these Ponzi schemes, of course, at some point, they uh, implode because there's not enough new investors coming in. But what you can still do is, you can still participate in them if you know what's actually going on and if you know where in the life cycle a Ponzi scheme is. And you can do this simply by, no, not simply, right, but you can do this by also, again, looking at blockchain events. You can use, again, Dune Analytics, find out how fast is this Ponzi scheme currently growing, how um, much have similar Ponzi schemes grown in the past, what kind of numbers you can kind of model then where in the whole cycle are you and are you expected to be early enough in the Ponzi scheme to still make money. Again, player versus player, kind of speculation, um, now just with a different label Ponzi scheme, right? But this is how you make money with speculation. You have to be smarter than others. So let's say you are not into property and let's say you also do not like uh, crypto. We already have ruled out Forex. What else is left? the stock market. When you're now thinking logically about this, right, like how could you potentially profit when speculating in the stock market? It's unlikely, unless you really dive very, very, very deep into this, it's unlikely that you're going to outsmart the people that speculate on Tesla stock or on Apple stock or on Amazon stock because big banks already have a lot of resources, a lot of brain power on those stocks. It's very large caps, right? There's a lot of money moving from A to B. You can scale this relatively well. Uh, once you've got an opinion on this, you can deploy several billions of dollars on this and this moves the price to a probably very efficient level, right? So whenever uh, something new comes out, some news around Tesla comes out, it's very likely going to be priced in somewhat adequately, relatively fast. Right, because there are simply so many good brains on this. If you wanted to win in the stock market, the best way in my perspective, if it's not investing, if it's speculating, buying low, selling high, player versus player, is to look at small caps. Look at obscure small caps. Look at very small companies, maybe penny stocks. Look maybe at countries where stock investing isn't yet as popular. Right? Look at uh, the small companies in, I don't know, Vietnam. Or look at the uh, small companies in the Philippines. Don't look at the large caps in the US. And then do really deep research, right? Don't just draw lines on a chart. Try to talk with the employees of the company. Try to get industry knowledge. Maybe you focus on one particular industry, right? Maybe it's the, I don't know, shrimp export industry in Thailand. And you look at maybe if there may be small players there. Maybe there's currently a large player in that shrimp export industry that is buying up all the small players. Maybe you can buy a small player and it's likely going to be acquired. Figure out what the employees at the company think. Do they think they will get acquired? So that's the kind of thing where you can get the alpha. Okay? It's not sexy. You have to obviously put in the time in order to become an expert in something. But that's maybe also why it makes sense to then focus on an industry still that's maybe ex uh, obscure and companies that are small, but still something that you're interested in, right? If you're not interested in shrimp export, maybe you don't want to spend hours and hours and hours every day to research the industry. 
right? You still need to have some kind of passion around this uh, to be able to become the top 10%. So that's the whole secret around speculation. The whole secret around speculation is being better than the average and being cognizant about that, right? Being conscious that you're not going to outsmart the very smart people, but you can still make money with speculation. Simply make sure that you don't run against crazy competition. And especially if you don't have billions yet to multiply, but you have small amounts, you can work with small caps. Because the banks, for them it's not worth it to look at a stock that's just a few million, right? They can't put a very expensive investment banker knowledge on those small stocks. But you, you have the time, right? If you make 20, 30% on your $100,000, $200,000 investment, that might be worth it for you. It's not worth it for the bank. So look at these kinds of heterogeneous markets that, are, um, that need very specific knowledge. Get that knowledge and with that knowledge you can then consistently buy low and sell high because simply you understand the dynamics better than the average Joe. Hope you found this useful. Feel free to give this a thumbs up, a comment. If, in case you've got any questions, of course, appreciate it as well. It helps the algorithm. And if you haven't yet subscribed, feel free to do that as well. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.